Right now, people at, are at an all-time low because they're disengaged, disconnected, not seeing any upward movement collectively or even sporadically. It's just stagnant. But who do you attribute that to as far as uh, being disengaged? with the core audience in which the Democratic Party has always had, and that is people of color and women. So why is there such a disconnect now? That's a very good question. Part of it is politics takes a very lethargic approach towards coming into modern times. Mm -hmm. Look at it. Lynching was going on for decades post-slavery. Actually, close to a century, the intelligentsia, the humanistic spirit back during that time of righteous human beings in this country was saying, that's, in, that's inhumane, that's wrong, that's ungodly. But the culture in this country, in most parts of the, in the southern states legally, was that, oh, this is what we do. And politics never addressed it that. Mm -hmm. They didn't see a sense of urgency until media, television, started. And the, the Chicago Defender almost summarily shifted the intellectual paradigm of who should be talking about subjects that impact our community and forced politicians to act. 1965 19, to 1967, from the Civil and Voting Rights Act, that shifted and changed really the paradigm. And it took the murder of John F. Kennedy and Robert Kennedy and all of these other deaths that were occurring, from Dr. Martin Luther King. Fortunately, he was able to see the politi you know, policies change, but imagine we're free 1860, in 1865, and here it is in 19 1965, we're codifying laws where separate but equal should not be the case. Civil rights, human rights, voting rights in 1967. I mean, housing laws changed. These were, this was over a century post-slavery. And so if your politicians are not current or progressive minded, they'll stay where they are, status quo, for black folk, brown folk, white folk, and there'll be no shift. I think Oftentimes, we get in the room, some of us black politicians, and we're just happy to be in the room. We don't want to upset the apple cart. The way we've been able to get in the room is we need some people to sit at the table, some people to stand on the table, and some people to kick the table over to move the ball forward to at least waken folks' consciousness. And I think too many of us in the House in the state Senate hid or can hide behind the cloak or the aloof, distant state capitals across this country and away from our, our core constituencies and have things just sort of go along to be going along. Unless there is a public outcry or public phenom, be it economic, be it digital, be it political, be it violent, be it gross ignorance, which is what we're seeing in D.C., that really changes our, think, our thinking and our thought process. Sexual harassment has been going on forever in this country. Still is. Gross discrimination, economic discrimination, and isolation has been going on tremendously long here in this city, state, and country. But it takes outsiders, constituencies, that are given voice and are, or are organized or moving towards organizing to really get politicians' attention in order for policy to change. The last election, which happened to be the most expensive election for a sole state legislative office in Illinois. In the country. In the country, right? right? Where did all this rage come from? And I wow. say rage because you had unions that were specifically focusing on getting you out of office because of the policies in which they did not agree with whether it was not, you know, getting their child care credit in enough time, 
their home um, service uh, provisions for seniors and other uh, other issues they had with you not moving quick enough and then the Madigan versus Duncan backlash. <laughs> so can we clear up what you feel was a misconception that was sh shared with the public in terms of what you were standing on your platform? Well, that's a, a big question in uh, the different layers. Let me be clear. Uh, I have supported trade unions, service employees, at the local level, at the county level, at the state level, day one. So there's really no issue there in terms of the unions. The issue became when Mike Madigan wanted to flex his muscle, as he does quietly and openly and sometimes loudly, and everyone else fights his battles. The unions would do it when it's convenient for them, and or if they want to curry favor with him, because if you look at his history of voting against some of the union interests at times, they have never went to the level of angst and anxiety and sense of urgency to get rid of him as they did me. So it was a combination of things. It was sort of a, an overall storm that went into a level of hysteria because they did not want me to come off of Mike Madigan's program. And that program was, when I say we're gonna vote on something, we're gonna vote on it. When I say we're gonna vote up or down on something, that's what we're gonna do. That's the culture down in Springfield, Illinois. It is Mike Madigan's show from start to finish in the House of Representatives as well as in the Senate. Don't let anyone tell you different. He can prove it, and I certainly can prove it as well, that he is the boss of politics here in the state. Anytime you can call any alderman in my district that I represented, or any other parts of this Democratic Cook County in particular, and they do exactly what he says, and then he identifies who the current boogeyman is, and they oblige. So the issue was uh, they were expecting me to be that 71st vote, to be the person to do what Madigan was mounting up towards his anxiety towards Governor Rauner. And he really wanted to teach him a lesson. And sometimes just for the sake of teaching a lesson. The biggest issue was he wanted to strip the governor of his ability to negotiate with the unions by way of having an arbitrator there if they couldn't come up with an agreement. Now that's relevant for fire and police, those emergency services, but we didn't do it for any governor in the history of this state. My thing is, someone in the public sphere who has to be accountable to the public should negotiate in good faith on behalf of the people, not just a particular special interest group as a union, because everyone's not in the union. And God bless you if you are. But I have a proud, long-standing relationship with the unions, but I've voted probably about 98% of legislation that supports the working class families here, if you will. I voted for that bill before in the spring, but the governor, excuse me, the speaker, who also wants to be or feels as if he's the governor, you can ask Pat Quinn that or Rob Lagojevich that as well, two Democrats that he fought tooth and nail with, quite frankly, and everyone knows that because we did overtime with both of them several times, remember? Quinn stopped our paychecks because we didn't get things done. He was fighting with Mike Madigan. So this was a manufactured crisis that occurred as it relates to child care. That was the perfect fodder for... Mike Madigan teaching me a lesson in front of every other House member on the Democratic side to look, see, and behold what we will do to one of, your, to one of our own if he doesn't do what I say. That's the bottom line with that. Because he could have called that bill to override the governor's veto before I left out of town on official business and or waited when I came back. But Mike Madigan is not used to not getting what he wants from anybody, especially a black legislator. The reason my race was so significantly huge was because there is very little history of a Democrat in this city, county, and state that's ever defied or went against his opinion, policy-wise. And that was the big sin of all sins in here in, the, in this region. And then he had someone like myself standing up and saying, listen, wait a minute. You're not going to just push or bully me around, Mike Madigan. 
under the guise of the Democratic Party without me fighting back with you. And so you had other people who happened to be from Democratic uh, uh, contributors to Republican contributors. And by the way, every single politician, locally, county, or statewide, we take money from everybody. We don't care what your party affiliation is. If you write that check to citizens for or friends of, your average politician is taking that money. Do you have